Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. WISE, the World Innovation Summit for Education, kicks off this Tuesday in Doha and six innovative projects will be receiving awards to recognize their outstanding achievements. We'll take a look at three of the winning schemes. First, we look at STEM subjects, that's science, technology, engineering and maths. Making these subjects engaging and interesting is important, and even more so when it comes to gender parity. We look at how one project in Saudi Arabia took a creative approach. Kobar, eastern Saudi Arabia, where there are the largest oil wells and refineries. Now the country's natural resource is helping to boost learning. Aramco, the kingdom's leading petroleum production company, has collaborated with the Ministry of Education, targeting 50,000 students with a program called Ithra Youth. It's designed to educate students and involve them in scientific experiments in a fun environment. The idea behind the program is to enrich students' knowledge because the traditional methods limit students' way of thinking, while ITHRA makes students think in a creative way, think outside the box. Every week a group of trainers visit two public schools for boys and girls separately in different parts of the kingdom. iSpark is one of many of their workshops in this secondary school in Ras Tanura. The instructors aim to build a kind of emotional connection between students and STEMs by using student-centered models of education and inspiring hands-on experience. Other workshops are I Discover, I Wander, I Broadcast and I Read. We hope that the students use this experience in their schools so that we can build citizenship concepts. Since we launched the program last year, we've reached 15,000. These students are deciphering DNA. We have learned about DNA and its spiral shape at school in textbooks only. Here we got a deeper understanding of it. Now I know it better. Programming robotics to carry out orders for energy savings and eco-friendly cities are what the program Ideal Cities likes to promote. But it is not only about hard sciences. Encouraging reading is also important here. One of ITHRA's initiatives is I Read. It's a celebration of those who love reading. It gives people a chance to speak on stage about a book that's changed their lives and explain how it's done that. And building bridges is another exciting experience for those passionate about engineering. The trainers are building for the future too. And by 2020, ITHRA aims to inspire two million young people. Making subjects attractive is a positive move, but how about making education as a whole attractive? Not just to straight A students, but to those who drop out prematurely. Turning the tide is not an easy task, but one project has made a difference. Let's see how. Scarborough is just 20 minutes out of Toronto, but it might as well be on the moon with its desolate landscape. Low income buildings, only one school, Nothing is walking distance, and the $2.50 bus ticket is too expensive for the struggling families of this multicultural neighborhood. Richie is 16, his brother Dave is 9. Their family moved from Guyana to Canada eight years ago in search of new opportunities, but since then has struggled with poverty and language barriers. When he was 13, Richie was about to drop out of school. I didn't really like care about school. It was just like whatever to me. My friends, we didn't... Like, we used to skip class because we didn't really care about school. Yeah, that's the kind of kid I was back then. That year, his mother got a letter from a community-based association, Pathways. They were offering free tutoring and even a bus ticket to school. In a few years, Dave saw his brother change. My brother was like a friend. At first, he was skipping school and phone calls coming home and saying that he was yelling back to the teacher or skipping. And now he doesn't get phone calls or skip school or yell back to the teacher. Key figure in the Pathways program is the student parent support worker. Richard is more than a teacher or a tutor. You do build a, a close relationship that's based on mutual trust and, and communication. 
so my students know about me beyond just my role as a student principal worker. They know about my life in certain aspects, and, I sh and they share with me their lives. The human element of the relationship is just as important, if not more important, than the actual the monitoring the school aspect. So I believe Pathways is about relationships. The idea is to help families who often do not speak English, do not have money for the bus, let alone understanding how the Canadian school system works. For instance, they might not know what credits and classes are needed to apply for college. The high school dropout rate is considered an intractable problem. We came up with an innovation that solved this problem, that took the dropout rate from 56% to 13%. It's very important that people understand this is not an intractable problem. Low-income students can do just as well as anybody else if they're given the supports. Tutors and mentors are volunteers. Their goal is not only to follow the academics and give career advice. They want to be an adult who cares for these kids. Richard is like a brother because he's always there. He always like, has my back. If I need help, I just go to him. Richie is about to apply for college. He wants to study mechanics and dreams about opening his own car repair shop. The future looks bright. One of his brothers, a former Pathways student, is now in college. Pathways is now helping 4,500 students across four provinces in Canada. When Pathways opens a centre in a community, almost every kid enrolls. The average enrolment rate across all sites is 81%. As we've just seen, disadvantage can lead to disappointing school results and poor employment prospects, which in turn lead to more disadvantage. We go to New Zealand to explore how one award-winning project is using education to boost the social, economic and political status of the indigenous Maori population. New Zealand's indigenous Māori have been failing at school for 150 years. As a group, they have more behaviour problems, lower levels of academic achievement, and leave school earlier with fewer formal qualifications than non-Māori. But one project being implemented in 50 North Island secondary schools is reversing that trend. 15-year-old Dal Wiperi is a Māori student at Rotura Girls High School. I don't want to be known as one of those Māori kids that dropped out of school because it was too hard. I actually want to make something out of my life. What can you tell me about this one? She's being taught under a system called Te Koatanaka, which makes her relationship with her teacher the cornerstone of her education. <laughs> the confidence to make the relationships the first and most important part in the classroom, and then the learning will come afterwards. Part of that relationship is nurturing a student's strengths and placing high expectations on them. A whole new dynamic can occur, and that's where the, you know, that's when you get those aha moments, you know, that zing, the epiphany of learning. And that's what I think Te Kotahi Tanga is about. Rotura is popular with tourists for its lakes, thermal pools, and sulphurous atmosphere. But behind the picture postcard views, poverty, gang crime, and unemployment are high among its 20,000 Māori population. But Rotura Boys High is also implementing Te Kohotanga, and its Māori students are closing the gap on non-Māori. 16-year-old Jack Pukata is aiming high. Um, at the moment, I've got my eyes set on um, hopefully um, getting into foreign affairs and becoming a diplomat. Um, how I want to do it is um, after high school, hopefully move on to university. If you understand that structure, like its sister school, the teachers are passionate anything. about their students and students are responding well. Russell Bishop devised Te Kohatanga 12 years ago after concluding that far from Māori failing at school, schools were failing Māori because they weren't engaging them. They were even demonising them. I think we've had quite, a, um, quite an impact upon education in New Zealand, so people tell me, and that you no longer hear people talking about Māori children as being the, the causes of their own demise. The whole deficit notion of Māori children as being challenged across the, across the sector. And you hear a lot more about being, seeing Māori children as having high potential and, and having, being worthy of high expectations. 
The Ministry of Education has promised Bishop an increase in funding to expand the scheme to a further 100 schools. He's also adapting the system for Canada and Australia. That's all on the WISE Awards. What do you think? Have you got any good ideas for improving education? Do share your thoughts with us on our social media pages. We hope you've enjoyed the program. Goodbye for this week. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.